Okay, this will be the second video on meshing. It's a follow-on to the earlier video. The This time we'll be using a CAD model, or a Rhino CAD model instead of a SolidWorks model, which will cause a few changes. Most important of which, we can change the size function. We currently have it set to adaptive uh, as before, but we wanted to use proximity and curvature. This will make smaller cells around curves like the leading edges and closer to objects like the fuselage and the wings. So once we do that, I'm going to suppress this for a second so it'll run faster. If we generate the mesh, it takes a minute to run as this more complicated geometry. You can see there's much smaller cells around the leading edge and near the fuselage where we'll see most of the inconsistencies or the nonlinearities with the flow and the quicker changes. The next thing we want to do uh, is work on the boundary layer. To do this we use inflation layers. Uh, in the main mesh controls there's a global inflation setup. Uh, we're not going to use this. This works well for interior flows and very simple objects but it works pretty poorly on complicated objects like planes. So just leave that set to none for now. Instead, we're going to use local inflation. You get there, you right click the mesh button. Uh, it won't come up now because I already have one. But then you create an inflation. If we go here, here's the options. Uh, the scoping method, you want geometry selection, and then you select the whole geometry. To do this, I recommend suppressing the enclosure that you made around the file and then just hitting select all. Uh, it's currently suppressed, so we'll turn that off so it'll run. And then you can also create a boundary where the uh, inflation layers won't extend beyond. We won't do this for now. You have several options for the inflation. Uh, total thickness, first layer thickness, and smooth transition. Typically, for our purposes, you're going to be using first layer thickness. This lets you set up, a, as it says, the thickness of the first layer. So you can set that to, your y plus to scale your Y plus value. Right now I have the first layer set at one centimeter and I have 15 layers going with a growth rate of 1.05. This should do a pretty good job of capturing the boundary layer. So we'll run this. It'll probably take a minute to run. You also have pre and post options for inflation. Uh, pre typically works better uh, running it before post inflations typically had some overlap errors so I'd recommend avoiding doing that. So it's hard to see the inflation la layers but they are built now. There's a slight error over here just due to the complexity. But so with these inflation layers when we run the flow later you'll be able to see more boundary layer effects and get a more correct solution. As you can see it added a little bit to the meshing time but not a substantial amount, so you should still be able to handle this pretty quickly. Alright, thanks.